I have recently heard a claim that Christianity stemmed from Gnosticism, or it was applied that Gnosticism came first, or that in the very beginning there was a battle between the two, and that mainstream Christianity won out. When that person who made that claim was called out, they made the statement that they that they you know, had a religious you know, a religious studies professor who approved of their teaching at their university. I am qualified to teach religious studies at a university. Okay, that's not saying much. There's a lot of people that are over me. I at a normal I at a normal college university. I am qualified to teach religious studies. The real Christian scholarship are in the seminaries, are at Baylor, which is the best Baptist seminary, are at Duke, are at Fuller. Those are the best, but Duke's not really the best. Vanderbilt's probably one of the best academic, but not the past, but Asbury, Kentucky's good. These are where the Christian minds are, not some religious undergrad, that's like child's play. Go to a Christian seminary. That's where you get the real, where the stems and you think, oh, well, they just indoct. No, they don't. They're actually hard in the New Testament text if you go to a place like I did. So, no, I'm, I'm more, I, I, I'm probably more qualified than your religious studies teacher. Or, or religious, yes. And I'm not bragging, but just because a, a, a professor at, at a university who teaches religious studies, I studied church history from the second most famous Baptist historian. Yes, my pedigree outrakes most. Unless you're related to my same class or you no, know, William Brackney was my church. And that was just one. That was one course that I had a lot of other courses. So, yes, don't, I'm not going to let you get away with silly stuff. Back to Gnosticism. What was Gnosticism? Well, Gnosticism is when you kind of mix Christianity with Greek philosophy. What did the Gnostics believe? Well, first of all, the Gnostics came after the original Christians. Peter, James, the brother of Jesus, the Apostle John, Paul, they were the original Christians, all right? And the disciples and the 500 witnesses, they saw the resurrected Jesus Christ. They were not Gnostics. They all were Jews. And this is very important. Gnostics are very different from Jews. Jesus was a Jewish Messiah. He was very Jewish. Okay? Gnostics believed. Gnostics came after that. Yeah, they were early, but they were after that initial wave when the apostles began to die. The apostle John, like, you know, later in life, he ran into the Gnostic teaching, but that was years after Christianity had developed, and they had ran into the pagan belief system of Gnosticism, but that was after Christian beliefs. And yes, there are Gnostic books that weren't included in the Bible because they were written hundreds of years after the Bible, and they weren't credible. They weren't written by eyewitnesses. The witnesses all claim you know, the beliefs, the mainstream beliefs that we believe. Don't get me started. Look, if you argue this point, it, it's foolish. Gnosticism is heresy. Here, let me just give you a, a little prelude. The Gnostics, they were based, and they tried to combine pain. They tried to combine Greek philosophy with Christian theology, with the Bible. They believed that you were saved through gaining a secret knowledge. That's what Gnostics. That's what the root word for Gnosticism was, knowledge. They believe that, you know, you were saved by gaining a secret knowledge. You weren't saved by grace through faith. The Bible teaches we're saved by grace through faith in the cross. We aren't saved by knowledge. No. The Gnostics also taught that the body was evil and that your soul was trapped in an evil body and that your soul was eternal. That's not a Christian belief. And people that think that the Gnostics predated mainstream Christians, they are deluded. They are ignorant. They're still, they don't understand Christianity. 
Christianity, they, the Apostle Paul, he never used the word, I mean, he, he didn't consider himself a Christian. He, he considered himself a Christian, but he thought Christians were the true Jews. He saw it as a natural transition from the Jews, that it was the natural, they, the Jewish, the Jews who didn't accept Jesus were the ones that missed the boat. He considered the Christians that believed in Jesus as the Jews, as the true believers that made the boat. They were the true Jews, okay? So there was a connection to the faith. And the Jewish faith always held that the physical body was important. And Jesus Christ did too. The Gnostics didn't believe in a physical resurrection. Jesus Christ had a physical resurrection. And he not only had a physical resurrection, but he promised that we would have one too. And the Bible teaches that we're going to have a physical resurrection. And that we're not just going to go to heaven, but we're going to have a physical resurrection. And that there's going to be a new earth a new earth that we're going to live on in our new bodies. And Jesus foretold this by resurrecting physically himself. That's why it's important. That's why the Bible makes it clear that it wasn't a ghost, it wasn't an hallucination, that Jesus had a real body. All right? The Gnostics keep on appearing. There were Gnostics, the church, they, 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 as early as like 20 years ago, there, there was a Gnostic church started. It's a heresy. It's a Christian heresy. But the belief that the original Christians were not? No. There was the original, there was the Christian, there was the, the, the apostles. And yet the Gnostics, the Gnostics were one of the heresies that the Christians had to battle for the, the or, you know, orthopra, you know, for the orthopraxy beliefs, for the dogmatic beliefs, for the right doctrine. But that wasn't the first belief. So the people that you know think the Gnostics had the higher influence and that we came no. We came from the Jewish faith that came from the original Christians, that came, you know, really from the eyewitnesses. And then yeah, from there you know, there was wars and battles and that's kind of where the Gnostics fit in, but they were defeated because they didn't have the truth. And once you realize, you know, how idiotic the Gnostics were and how it contradicts so much of not just what the New Testament says, but the Old Testament too. The Old Testament's important because the New Testament, you know, it's, you know it's, a, it's a new covenant, but, you know, Jesus, the Christians considered themselves, the first Christians considered themselves the true Jews. That's important to consider. If you realized that, if you knew that, that would make you know that would shoot down the Gnostic argument right away. So I hope you learned something. Points like this matter. It really frustrates me when atheists they try to be an expert in evolution. They try to be an expert in literature. They try to be an expert in why the flood didn't happen, how the Tower of Babel didn't really work, how Noah's Ark really willing to work with all the animals, how, you know, we were, how the earth could have come from nothing, and then they try to talk about the historical Jesus and how the old, new type, you can't be an expert in it at all. I'm sorry, you can't be. I don't know evolution, creation, I'm not the one to be in that debate. I believe that God created us in his likeness, I'm a creationist. I'm not apologetic about it. I would lose a debate on the subject with someone who's well trained in it. But I would win a debate on whether Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. And that's more important to me. If I believe Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead, and if we had a debate, I'd probably win it. If I had, especially if I had time to prepare, because the evidence is there. I have not seen many Christians lose that debate on whether Jesus rose from the dead. Wouldn't that confirm what Jesus said? And Jesus did confirm the creation story. Jesus did confirm the flood. So Jesus rose from the dead. Wouldn't that confirm what he taught? Anyway, just a thought. Gnosticism was, they were not Christians. They were not, yes, they were a thorn in Christian side for a while, but anyone who thinks that the original Christians were Gnostics you're, you're, they were a heresy from the beginning. Own your stuff. Research before you're made a fool of. Like, 
I can do. And professors at colleges are not created equal. If I could be the professor at your college, then I'm not the person that you should be quoting, you know, no. Because I refer to people that are greater than me, but of course that's a Christian seminary that's really good. I don't know what college, and there's many different colleges out there. I went to Baylor. Baylor is the best Baptist school. I got a master's degree there. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at that. Not the best. One of the best. Then I got a doctor somewhere else. But I'm not, I'm not here to complain about like, my education. Either. Anyway, hope this was informing. It's 1247. It's time for peanut butter pancakes. I will talk to you later. And, you know, if you made it to 1041, if you made it all this way to my video, like it. Why do likes? I just get dislikes. I know I had people that watch my videos. I had like a four or five people that were watching. But no one likes it. I just get thumbs down. Why? I mean, if you're going to watch everything I say, if, if you think it's worth your time, at least give me a thumbs up. I mean, you may disagree with everything I say, but if you think what I say is worth it, I'm not out here to get votes. I'm not out here to get money. A thumb up once in a while would be kind of nice, though. I mean, does it all have to be a thumb down? Anyway, the better pancakes are calling. Talk to you later.